day when I've traveled this last mile here, the call will be coming. just a minute. I know there's a lot going on here tonight. I've seen that helicopter go off about 30 times. I told Roger before we came out, I said, I feel like I'm in a MASH movie. I've never seen so many helicopters. There he goes again. I've never seen tonight the need for Jesus Christ as we see it tonight in America. Tonight, there's a lot going on in this place and in these grounds. But the greatest need represented in each of our lives tonight is the Lord Jesus. A few weeks ago, I was invited back to the junior high school where I went in the 7th, 8th, and ninth grade to speak at a career day. I walked up and down the halls of Robinson Junior High School. and I looked into a room, and there was a room that many years ago was my English class. Went on down another room and there was my biology class. Went through the physical education department and saw the gym where as a kid I'd taken physical ed. Went out and passed the principal's office. Spent some time in there too. The 7th, 8th, and ninth grade. I never will forget when my principal used to whip me and jerk me up by my arm and he said, I feel you're a good kid. You shouldn't be here. And he said, now, this is hurting me as bad as it's hurting you. And I said, sir, that might be so, but it's not hurting you in the same place it's hurting me. <laughs> but you know, as I got in my car and as I began my drive home, it just seemed as though it was yesterday that I was running the halls of that junior high school. And then it came a reality in my life, a scripture that asked the question, what is your life? It is but a vapor that appeareth for a little time, and then it's vanished and gone away. And tonight, whether we live 60, 70, 80, even 100, life is short. A few months ago, I stood by a bedside by the bedside of one of my dearest friends. Fred Malloy and I grew up together, played as kids. Junior high, senior high, played ball together. Fred was my college roommate for three years. I love Fred. He was as good a friend as I could have had in this life. Monday morning, his wife Jennifer called. Fred had leukemia. She said, Phil, you need to come to the hospital. Said, Fred's hemorrhaging, and we need you. I watched Fred. No one was in the room but just Fred and I. I saw the breathing machine and all of the wires. And 
I saw the pale, cold color that had fell over his forehead. I stood and grabbed him by the hand, and I wiped his brow. I said, Fred, I love you, but he didn't hear those words. And I was holding Fred's right hand when his lease on life had expired. I was holding his hand when he drew his last breath of life and all the hurt, the anger, the emptiness that I experienced in my life as a preacher when my best buddy died. I went home that night and I went by my parents' house and I said, Mom, it's the toughest thing I've ever done. I said I was holding his hand when he died. She said, but son, there was another hand that took over when yours left off. Now, I don't know if we're supposed to get happy out here tonight, but I'm just about to get happy. I tell you what, folks, when I draw my last breath of life, when I cross the River Jordan, when you can't go, when my mom and dad can't go, when my friends, when my buddies can't go, I'm glad Jesus will be there and take me by the hand and lead me safely to the promised land. Praise the Lord. I am ready to go to. Are you that golden shore to live there? While the ages shall roll And I long to see Jesus And the saints of your 